Hello everyone, Riley Kuntz here from Black Diamond Mortgage. I'm super excited today. We are gonna be talking about growing your business through social media. And I have this, our lovely guest is Sam Riley from Back Porch Brands. She's a self-proclaimed marketing professional. Sam, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into that? I can, well, thank you for having me today. Um, you know, I am a mompreneur, I call it. I wanted to figure out how I could stay home with my family, but also um, be a business owner and work for myself. And about three years ago, I started a clothing brand and wanted to make sure I kept my overhead low and make sure I wasn't starting out and over my head with a ton of debt. Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself to learn how to build my website, know how to market my brand on social media. And from there, it just opened up a ton of doors. Mm -hmm. But in that time, I had to pay the dummy tax for all of you. And <laughs> I learned every wrong way to do things so that now I know every right way to do it. And um, it's been so beneficial. I've been able to now grow my business back porch brands into something amazing that now supports my family. And I get to share all my expertise with you. So. Oh, super excited that you're here today. I think this is going to be great information for those out there that are growing their business, or maybe you have a business, but you need to increase your social media presence and whatnot. So can you give us some tips as to how we can start growing our business through I social media? I sure can. So 4.2 million people are on social media. Oh my gosh. It's insane. So if you're not using this free platform to grow your brand, you're missing the boat. Mm -hmm. You're completely missing the boat. Um, the social media seems to be a little scary for some people when they start, um, but getting started is the biggest part. And once you get started, it all kind of flows how it should mm -hmm. if you take on these few tips that I'm gonna give you. So um, my first one is to have good content. You know, people, want to see something that's going to help them and right. give them you know some worth right mm -hmm. so if you're just posting randomly to populate your social media and your feed you're not doing anything for the client in your case right so you need good content so that people have something that they can use that's beneficial to them um the next thing is your captions. You have to have captions that are going to grab your user's attention. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna see the photo or the, the main picture of like your reel or um, whatnot. So the captions are gonna be the next part that you have to catch your user's attention. And by doing that, you wanna have something, um, we kinda call it, well, you have to make sure you have something to catch them in the first like 15 seconds, because gotcha. if you do not, they're going to move on to something mm -hmm. else. Um, so captions are my next big tip. Um, call to actions. A call to action is where you're asking somebody to do something. And a lot of that is you don't want to be like, buy now, you know, <laughs> buy now, uh, take, take the survey today. You know, you want to be able to engage them and um, get them to your website, quite frankly, is what one of the biggest, um, your biggest goal should be. Because mm -hmm. if you're in mortgage, if you're in apparel, you want people to get to your website so that they can understand your business more. And right. maybe that's where they're going to purchase the next thing. Mm -hmm. Or um, So if you have to have a catchy call to action to get them to the next step. So that's one of my, those are my top three. Um, the way you are going to also get up in the algorithms, I know, scary word, algorithms. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, what are those? Nobody knows the algorithms. Yeah, nobody <laughs> understands them. They change all the time and things like that. Um, if you're not offering your user or the client or whoever's mm -hmm. looking into your social um, something that's going to benefit them, they're not gonna comment on your stuff. They're not gonna save it. They're not gonna share it. Well, the way you get up in your algorithms are by comments, saves, and shares. Right. So going back to having good content is the very first thing we talked about is so important. Mm -hmm. So um, we first off, let me just go back so that we don't lose everybody because I okay. talk fast. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one, have good content. Right. From there, captions mm -hmm. to capture your audience. Um, the next thing is call to action. 
if you don't have a good call to action, you're not going to get people to take that next step to mm -hmm. say, get to your website. From there, um, you want people to be able to engage in it. And by doing that, they comment and they share and they save your post. So um, those are my big ones. I know it seems like a lot for one post, you have to think of all these things yeah. just to feel like you're gonna grab somebody's attention, but it's so important that you don't lose your user. So. Do you have a recommendation as far as how you should be interacting if someone does comments? Do you need to comment back to every single comment you receive or I like every comment or? Completely, I feel like you need to make every person on there feel special. Right. It's so important that they're taking the time mm -hmm. to comment on your post and that's like almost stopping you in the street to have a conversation with you in a sense that you need to make sure that they're noticed and that you, because a lot of times they're gonna have questions right. and you want to make sure you answer their question or there they go, they've fallen off and how are you gonna get that person back? Right. Yeah. Well, there's so many different social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Do you have a recommendation as to the best or what we should be using or? I do. So what's going to blow everyone's mind right now is we have over 128 social platforms oh my gosh. around the globe. I so think, I just think of like three. Yeah. <laughs> There, that's crazy that there's so many. It's completely overwhelming, especially when you're like, gosh, where do I start in? What, where is the best place to spend my time? So my recommendations are if you are starting your brand or selling something, which most of us are, and mm -hmm. that's why we're here, is to start with Facebook. Facebook is super user friendly, mm -hmm. has a huge crowd to be able to pick from, and the algorithms aren't as scary as um, Instagram. But um, I feel like Facebook is also now its own world and people are now moving more to Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I would say your best place to start is Facebook. Facebook also has extra things that Instagram doesn't have, like making events. And, right. um, you know, there's a lot of extras to that that Instagram doesn't have. So I think that's very important. And to find your local community is way easier to do on Facebook. Yeah. So I would say Facebook is your best place to start. From there, um, Instagram. Instagram has insane amounts of people on there that are going to help grow your brand. So you can't get away from, oh, I'm just going to do Facebook. If you're going to do Facebook, you have to be on Instagram as well because it they... They seem like the same in a sense. You're like, oh, these are two social media platforms, mm -hmm. right? But they're not. And I um, I completely believe that Instagram is going to outpace Facebook and mm. Facebook will kind of be a thing of the past at some point. Yeah. Um, and the third one that is huge is, especially for like your, these podcasts and inf more information, because you can only put so much on Instagram and so right. much on Facebook. Um, I mean, in like the length of things that YouTube is one of your best bets. YouTube, you can put longer videos. They also have YouTube shorts now, which is a, a add to it, right? Right. And so YouTube is right there in my uh, top three. I've heard that, and also you kind of get different demographics between Facebook and Instagram. Um, you might have kind of like the older crowd <laughs> and then maybe a younger crowd on Instagram. Yeah. I felt like I wasn't super active on Instagram and I linked, you know, because you can link Facebook and Instagram really easily. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of made it naturally to that, that gateway into Instagram for me is that if I just posted something on Facebook, it automatically went to my Instagram. And so it helped me grow my Completely. Instagram. So, yeah. Um, you will see sometimes, too, so going, that was a really good point you made there of how you can um, cross post. Mm -hmm. It does make your job a lot easier. Um, it also actually opens up, instead of cross-posting, it allows you to get more content out to your users. And if you post something to Instagram, but also post something different to Facebook on that same day. So, you know, because a lot of people go straight from, hey, I'm going to go check my Facebook, and now I'm going to go check my Instagram. Mm -hmm. But they see the same thing from you. So right. cross-posting is great for convenience, but also one of those things that um, I don't always recommend to do. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Great. Well, I feel like you've provided lots of great in information for people to kind of get going on their social media and marketing and trying to figure it all out. If someone wanted to work with you or connect with you, how would they reach you? 
Um, well, thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, if you want to connect with me and see what more I have to offer, I do a lot more marketing than just social media. You can connect with me at backporchbrands.com and send me an email. I'd be more than happy to help you. There's tons of information on there to figure out what I'm all about and what I do for a living. So thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today, Sam. Thank you. And I hope that this helps you in your business endeavors.